It's Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. Cape Girardeau's Capital Improvement Program prioritizes infrastructure needs in the city. Here to talk about the CIP and other municipal issues is Cape Girardeau City Manager Scott Meyer. Thank you so much for your time. It's always good to be here. Well, let's let's start off with the uh, with the Capital Improvement uh, Program. What are some what are some projects that uh, already have that uh, already have a funding source right now, and what are some that uh, the city is still kind of searching for? Well, we have uh, five years in the capital improvement program that is that is funded, and that's the purpose of of the program is to bring before the public and our council and identify uh, those things that will be built in the next five years, and we actually have funding for. And so there there are quite a few things. We have uh, the rest of uh, TTF that's being built. Of course, the wastewater treatment plant is is being completed, and uh, and then we have uh, some water improvements uh, ongoing. Um, and then we are, are working on uh, some of our, our uh, other needs in, in, uh, in uh, technology as well as facilities. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of those facilities that are still kind of looking for that, uh, that funding, such as the, the, the police station, for instance. Kind of where, where are we at with, with that right now? Uh, the police station, as you know, we've talked about it. Uh, we've done, done a study now, and, uh, and so we're beginning to work through that process. We're going to have an open house. Uh, in in March and, and can continue to collect input from the public. We're also looking at ways we can operationally decrease the size of the of the uh, of the proposal so that we can uh, do it more efficiently. So we're really looking hard at that, and uh, so we'll be looking toward uh, at some point a funding source. Well, what are the, what are the funding mechanisms that are that are on the table right now for that? Well, uh, we're looking at. Uh, at, at all the funding sources <laughs> that might be available. Uh, of course, there's a, there's a use tax that's out there. There also is uh, an upcoming fire tax uh, that have been used for uh, public safety in the past. And so th those are probably uh, two of the, of the biggest possible uses. Now the uh, the transfer station obviously has had some some problems in the past, and uh, uh, where are we at with, with, with that right now? And how soon is that gonna need to be re replaced? Well, it, it, it certainly is reaching the end of its life, its, uh, its useful life. We have um, shown that to uh, the, the governing agencies at the state. We have our, had our council out uh, and looking at it. And so we're looking at alternates right now and different ways of, of maybe involving uh, private-public partnerships, of, uh, of, of moving the location to where it's better accessible for the public, and to where maybe the public and, and the, uh, the commercial users are maybe at the same place, but separated in a way that makes it easier for both of those parties to use the station. Yeah, I know. I've, I've driven up to the uh, to the transfer station in my in my Jeep with some carpet in the back, and uh -huh. it was, I didn't quite fit in with the uh, <laughs> with, with with the rest of the cars. It can be it can be overwhelming. It can be a little overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, radio, um, some some radio operability uh, uh, technology. This is something mm -hmm. that's been mentioned in the CIP. What what exactly is this, and uh, and what are we looking at in the future here? Really, and this is part of our our IT po uh, portion of the uh, capital mm -hmm. improvement plan. Uh, what we have currently is we have different uh, public safety uh, frequencies that are used and, and a real difficult time with police talking to fire and police talking to other uh, agencies, fire talking to other agencies, of course, with, uh, with our mutual aid, that, that's necessary. Uh, what we're moving is to, toward a system where they can all talk to each other. They can all go to a common place and, and talk to each other. That technology now exists. It's been chosen for our state, so the state is on board with a certain uh, 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 way of doing that. So we're developing a technique to do that, and we're also, some money might be available for the state because they're looking for places on towers and things, so maybe if we can partner with them, it's a time when we can move toward that so that we get this total interoperability so that when we do have a crisis situation, uh, everybody can talk and be on the same page. I was going to say, like in an emergency emergency situation, um, everybody being able to communicate, you know, across agencies and you know, state and local level, has to be incredibly important for it, for, for response. It's critical uh, for for two reasons. One of them is because it, it allows us to respond uh, more quickly and more efficiently to the situation. But it's really uh, primarily that's the safety of those those responders, those officers. Uh, in, in every case, as well as the public. So safety is the number one driver in that. Efficiency, uh, of course, is a, a benefit of that. You know, we've had a, a, a really nasty winter. Um, tell us a little bit about what this winter has done to the, to the roads here in town. Well, uh, freeze and thaw. We, <laughs> I guess we would have been better off if it would have just froze and stayed. <laughs> 
and, and really would have been, uh, but freeze and thaw really good. Uh, the, the liquid goes down into the cracks of the concrete or the asphalt. Uh, it expands, and of course, a, a water that freezes expands, and then that's when it, uh, we, it breaks out, and it causes those pressures such that it breaks out, and if you're driving much around town, you've seen them. Uh, we see them too, and uh, we are in the process of fixing uh, many of them right now, but uh, part of the fixes are temporary and things that we're going to come back and, and uh, we'll be in the, in the springtime uh, fixing on a, on a planned scale and, um, and hope to get our roads back in, in usable form. Um, are there any estimates on how much it would cost to get the, to get the roads all, all uh, not, fixed Not up? right now. Of course, we, we are counting the cost and looking at that uh, moving into spring, but we, we haven't been able to plan that totally yet. I think as, as we speak, we're actually out uh, doing some <laughs> pre-treating for the next, uh, the next storm. So. Uh, haven't, haven't been able to, to get that all planned out yet. But the city of Cape Girardeau has been fortunate uh, and never had issues with, with salt, for instance, with the no, roads, we, right? No, we, we are. We, we built a, a very good sized uh, salt facility and going into each winter we fill it up and uh, we, we fill up enough to do uh, uh, more than just a regular uh, winter for one of our worst winters. We, we are always ready. and so. So that's, that's important and uh, we've been able to address it uh, each and every storm. Let's talk about a couple of, uh, a couple of road projects, the, the, the William Street project and the, and the Armstrong Drive project. What, what's, the, what's the status of, of those right now? Well, as we went through this, the capital improvement process, one of the inputs that we got from, from citizens as well as our, our council was that the, the William Street, as we've heard from the public, uh, they, they seem to cry out and say, no, we really don't think there's a need for uh, a reduction or additional lanes down William Street that, that the size that it is now really works well for them. So we paired that project back and uh, it is currently now shown as a, a potential project for uh, some beautification and some pedestrian access to help help that through the area, which really uh, everybody was on board was, was still, that those were still needs. They're not funded right now, <laughs> but those were needs, but certainly not an expansion or a contraction of it of the lanes is not going to be uh, moved forward at all. And how about with uh, with Armstrong? Armstrong is a different uh, situation. It is a funded project uh, that we've had uh, in place for some time. It it actually is a road that would go behind our Walmart just off of Route K. And uh, that project was put in as a potential growth uh, project uh, for some development. And so far that development hasn't, hasn't taken place and so there hasn't been a need for it. And so what council said was uh, because we've had some funding issues with high right-of-way costs, um, we, we're just going to hold that right now and, and maybe use that for other development uh, opportunities that might come rather than use it. Now then, if, so, if a developer buys that and solves the right-of-way uh, issue, uh, you know, we'll, we can use it for that too. So it really kind of holds back and, and spends the money where it uh, can do the most good. We've been talking today with Scott Meyer. He is Cape Girardeau's city manager. Scott, thank you so much for coming to talk with us. It's always great to be here. And thank you for joining us today for Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration between Southeast Missouri State University's Department of Mass Media, the city of Cape Girardeau, and KRCU, the public radio station for Southeast Missouri. Our executive producer is Jim Dufek. I'm Jacob McClelland. Thanks for watching.